Yo, what's up, First Smoke family? We got episode 95 with the Pizza Pusher live from New York City in the Stone Lounge. Make sure you keep it locked. Go to drdabber.com. Go check out the excess. Shout out to Grow Generation, growgeneration.com. Use the code First Smoke 10 online or in stores. Go check out Drip as well. Email us at family at First Smoke of the Day if you want to get hooked up with Drip, a trial run, however you want to play it. Shop.fsotd.com. New merch, new gear. We're showing love on the pricing. There's free shipping on all domestic orders. And go sign up for that membership, fsotd.com. Shout out to the Tier 3 gang. We appreciate you guys. And without further ado, man, let's get into it. It's the Pizza Pusher, live, first smoke of the day. This is the definition of New York. Every time we go somewhere, you open up the door, you're seeing shit you wouldn't expect. This shit looks wild right here. And then COVID came, and COVID changed my life. Like, we were doing good. Regular pizzerias did good, regular weed dealers did good, and I did phenomenal. How did about you? I had no idea that I'm living in Murder Mountain? Oh, Bill. Did you ever run into Bill up the hill? No. Who's no? <laughs> <laughs> it was an outdoor 200 person seated restaurant that we did this food with, and we had an outdoor movie theater that sat 100 people. It was literally in Coney Island, so the rides were all around us, and uh, wow. It was like the dope, it was the most thing I'm most proud of, and they let it rock. Probably one of the most top-notch establishments I've ever been to in my life. I've been everywhere. I'm smoking the Godfather, Definitely. which is hand-rolled here. I don't I even smoke blunts. I don't even Sorry. smoke blunts. I don't even smoke tobacco. So Bernard said, you know it's official. Yo, what's up, everybody? We're back again. Episode 95 today. We got a super special guest in the building. He's welcomed us in his lounge. We're live in New York City. Um, it's your boy, Pat Gods. I'm here with my co-host, as always, Black Leaf. You already know. What up, what up? And we're joined by the Pizza Pusher. Yo, yo, yo. Live <laughs> from New York City. Here we are. And man, thanks for having us. My pleasure. This I is think amazing. Styles, too. Like, I honestly didn't even know they asked me if Styles could do a podcast. Yeah. I'm not even sure if they told me what he was doing. Like, I know Styles for like 20 years, and he's always been like the same exact person. And I literally would do anything they ever called me to hex him to do. If I could do it, I'm gonna do it. Sh yeah. Straight up, man. Thanks yeah. for allowing us to do that as well, because that uh, just a special dude right there. Yeah, I enjoyed sitting through his podcast. Man, his interview. Man, special talk, special guy, a special energy, and that's what you seem to be curating out here in New York City. Yeah, yeah. This is our seventh location. You know, we have seven of these that's, around. The, that's what they're. The you know, as I'm doing my research, there's multiple locations. Yes. Yeah. What uh, different specialties in in each? Each one is a different. Yeah, each one is a different vibe. Like this is a supper club, live music. Um, we have like a a, a nightclub vibe downstairs. In Brooklyn, we have like, we're across the street from the beach. So we have a beach house um, that has like a three level outdoor space is really nice, two floors inside. Um, we have our original place is on East 4th Street. Um, it's just a regular basic restaurant. You know, it's beautiful, but it's just a re regular restaurant. Um, then I have one opening this Thursday in Philadelphia. I have one in New Jersey. I have one in the Catskills. And I feel like I'm missing one, but I feel like I'm missing Damn. one. Oh, the Bronx, yeah. the Bronx. I was missing one, and I, I, I bought one yesterday um, with my 420 money. I went and bought <laughs> one in the Bronx, and um, yeah, and I, I haven't went there yet, but yeah, I have another one in the Bronx, and we're gonna do that one. It's gonna be, um, we're gonna call it Eights, and it's gonna be pizza by the slice. It's not gonna be like um, the Bronx one's not gonna be like this, and our. Pizzas are eight slices, and we call it eights. Wow, bro. Yeah. This is an experience. Yeah. You're yeah. outside New York, you open the door, yeah, and then you speak easy. completely somewhere else. Yeah. And you walk down this hallway that yeah. it almost like transforms as you go through, and then it opens up into this, which is, I mean, yeah. this is a dining experience. Even if you had weed out of the equation, yeah. this is an epic experience. But this should be what weed 
you know, this should be involved in weed. Like yeah. this should be what weed is like, um, or a part of it. Yeah. I love the fact that we don't sell liquor. You know, I'm not a drinker, I'm a smoker. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't want the problems that come with liquor or, you know, we've been doing this seven years, seven years we haven't had an ambulance or a cop called. We haven't had never nothing. Like everybody's chilling, never an argument with the customers or nothing. And people might be like, well, what's this drink then? This is actually a medicated drink. It's THC infused, yeah. And it's phenomenal. Much better than liquor. Tastes amazing. Come on, you'll be on a beach in Miami. No hangover. <laughs> I really just built what I would like to come to as a smoker. Like, um, what would I like to do? I like live music. I like to smoke, eat good, not be like crowded. How did it come on, uh, you know, coin the name Pizza Pusher? I would, had to come up with some kind of name and uh, that seemed like a one that would catch. Go on. Absolutely. Yeah. What was it like for you? You grew, you grew up in New York City or? I grew up in Brooklyn. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've been, I'm 50 now. Um, I grew up the first 20 years in Brooklyn and the second 30 years in Manhattan. And what was that like growing up in Brooklyn? Mm. Interesting. I went to prison at 18 and came out at 24. Um, so it was, anyway, that's what most people did in Brooklyn. <laughs> Come, no, you know, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Damn. I don't know many people that I grew up with that didn't go to prison. Some still there. But that's somehow cool. always, I, I never liked, um, when I was young, when I was 17 years old, I went to a nightclub for the first time with like older friends for my birthday, not knowing I can't handle liquor, not knowing I was like 105 pounds and just not understanding the dynamic of it. I got there at 10 a.m. It was like dollar shots from like 10 to 12. It was like my first time at an adult thing, you know? And um, I did something really dumb and I shot a gun in this fucking club and I could have hurt somebody and I never drank liquor after that. It was my first time drinking and my last time drinking. And now I'm 50. It should happen when I was 17. And so I always- It's traumatic, I mean. I stuck with um, mm -hmm. weed because, um, like I never want to wake up the next day and be like, the fuck happened last night and that shit don't happen with weed <laughs> no <Nah, Yeah>. it doesn't <laughs> i think we all have maybe not to that extent but learn that lesson yeah but for some of us or most of the people <coughs> it's easier to side with society and consume alcohol yeah than it is cannabis yeah so they've just it's chosen that and they ignore the fact that like they wake up you know, you wake up as a person like, what the fuck happened? You blacked out. Like, you don't remember shit. Your real story. The, the I don't know how it is in other places like California, if the landlords have gotten cool with this idea, but here they're not. Right. And so 90% of the landlords, once they hear cannabis, they're like, nah, they'd much rather have liquor, but just, it's just the not, the no knowledge of, you know, they're afraid of what this might be. But it's nothing. It's like much better than much better than having a liquor club. Which just shows you that you might be like, oh, well, it's the smell. And it's like, well, no, they'd be okay with Cigar Lounge. Mm -hmm. They're not okay with the cannabis. Yeah. yeah, it's the cannabis. It scares the landlords. Mm -hmm. Well, just I think I think it's just old school propaganda that's yeah, still yeah, yeah. It's, it's supreme still in here. their minds mm -hmm. of like, no, nah, you can't, you know. Yeah. Even though it's, that's how modern day prohibition happened in the first yeah. place i'm pretty sure yeah. with alcohol mm -hmm. was the people just being like nah we are gonna do this shit yeah and we're not gonna stop so yeah. you either figure it out or we're just keep doing how we're doing it yeah bootlegging yeah it's pretty much the same thing it's the same exact thing growing up in brooklyn was pizza a big part of your life even back then Is pizza that was big so it was such a big part of my diet and now i don't need it at all <laughs> it's crazy you know if i did the steaks i'd be sick of steaks in the beginning i ate so much pizza you know like when i started doing this mm -hmm. i ate so much pizza trying to figure it out you know yeah and um yeah some at some point after time i don't even want to look at to eat pizza anymore <laughs> yeah you're you're making when you're making the sausages too it's just like man and and the, how many r d years of r d mm -hmm. you know a lot when you're uh i had no history like i never worked at a restaurant i never owned a restaurant nobody I never i still never cooked a pizza i still don't know how to make pizza 
You can't say that, man. Don't nah, I, don't, no. <laughs> well, I was like, I don't know if pizza stands for pizza. I put the yeah. pizza pusher. I put the um, <laughs> puzzle together, like, but I don't, I'm not a cook. Yeah. I put chef on my Instagram just so Instagram leaves me alone. Damn. Smart. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the first location? Mm, so for actually for like the first um, four years of this, we we didn't have a sitting location. We would just pick up and delivery. And, um, and then COVID came and COVID changed my life. Like we were doing, we were doing good, you know, but COVID happened and it was just like unfucking believable. Like everybody was stuck at home. They needed food. They needed weed and regular pizzerias did good. Regular weed dealers did good. And I did phenomenal. And it was just like the perfect storm too, because there was nobody on the road. There was no traffic. Usually my drivers have to deal with traffic, you know? Everybody, the government was giving out $600. It was just the perfect storm of, wow, nobody was doing what I was doing. And um, it was unbelievable. And then I just, I opened my first restaurant in S September three years ago. And the first one was on in the East Village and we still have it. What's that one called? Just stone pizza, stone pizza, fire, mm -hmm. and this is so sit in. This is a supper club, and Brooklyn is the beach house. Bronx is eight, and it's a full menu, a full. It's menu. a five course. It's a five course meal. You get um, you start off with salad, then you get ganja nuts, then you get pizza, uh, then you get chicken wings, then you get um, dessert, which is gelato and a cannoli. Everything's medicated. Everything's medicated. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the whole, when you do the full five courses or whatever, what's the total milligrams for that? Like, you know, you know. a lot of people ask that. And if I sit, yeah. if anybody know, you know, it, yeah. I'm going to be guessing or like, I don't send anything yeah. out or yeah. we don't have people passing out, like not on a regular anyway, yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah. we have people that yeah. pass out, you know, um, but um, it doesn't happen all, often. Um, we we don't nothing is so heavily medicated that you're going to eat one thing this is not the half a brownie situation right we want you to eat the gelato we want you to get to the, the end of the meal we want you to taste the cannoli yeah absolutely so this is just building up it's a little bit in each and just building up and building up that's the proper way to do it yeah, yeah. you know the whole knockout thing trying to nah, get people beyond uh, fucked up most was, people don't want that's that that's scaring the consumer this though. is a little it's like you getting blackout drunk yeah yeah. Same type of, some people have that opposite thing happen with weed and they're like, I can't fuck with weed. Yeah. And that's the rest of their life. Yeah. A lot of people tell me, oh, it makes me paranoid. I'm like, you just got to smoke through it, but it makes mm -hmm. us all fucking paranoid. We're introducing something new to our fucking body. Yeah. But smoke through it and you get through it. Yeah. Find what works for you too. At this, at this stage of the game, you can, different strains do yeah, different things. So many options and ways to, you can find what's your life. for you and, and stick to that and, you know. Mm -hmm. explore when you are a little more have a higher tolerance yeah you know yeah how did the first stoned pizzas come about when you were r and in the first ones what was mm. that like so i went um i used to have a company before this called send a package and we did that for like 10 years and we were like new york's inmate superstore we sold mad shit to inmates and that's how i met styles styles actually i met most of the um celebrities that i know that helped me with with pizza pusher i met them through um send a package wow yeah and um and yeah that's why that's what i did b before this and um when, when that shut down i had always knew that i wanted to be in cannabis as as the times were changing and legalization was coming mm -hmm. you know i knew that but i just didn't know how i didn't i never would have guessed food I, it wasn't even in my, my thought process. I thought growing and selling was, you know, so I moved up to Humboldt in Eureka, California, and I grew for six months. God bless you. Thank you. And um, what I found out in growing was, I don't want to do that fucking work. You know, the yeah. money was good, you know, but I'm not trying to fucking live in a mountain and, and this is not my life. So but when I was there in um, Eureka, somebody invited me to their house. Their wife was cooking a medicated dinner. Everybody was growers on the mountain. A few of us went. You went straight house. to the Mecca. The food was shit. 
<laughs> she was a terrible cook. It was it was really really bad. But I I thought there, wow, I could go home and do this. I could take this bread, go home, and um, do high end cannabis dinners. Nobody was doing it here at that time, and uh, it was like eight years ago. And um, I started doing those cannabis dinners, and then Super Bowl, I did pizza as a snack in between, like a, that they could watch uh, eat while they're watching after the dinner, but while we're watching Super Bowl. And it stuck and people just went. And then I was like, hold up, wait a minute. If I sold this pizza for $50 and delivered it to you, would you buy it? Like just asking people, would that work? Would you do it? W would you, you know, it's me, but if other people don't know it's me, you think they would eat a pizza that they don't know where, like I met people on the corner, random corners and gave them a box, had someone else hand them a box of food. And in the beginning, I, wasn't nobody knew who the pizza pusher was would you eat it it was something i was thinking like i'm not sure if people are gonna ingest something that they don't know who made it and where it was made but they fucking did <laughs> They did. Yo, family, if you want to know where to get all the dope exclusive merch you see us rocking on the show, go to shop.fsotd.com. It's free shipping on all domestic orders. We're trying to hook up the whole family. We want you guys to rock the merch and show us you're a part of the family. All the ashtrays are on there. The lighters are on there. The trays are on there. The stonewash hoodie is on there. The family ties tea is sold out. You should have moved quicker. Um, <laughs> and also, yo, Tag us in photos. Let us know you're rocking the merch, you're rolling up on the tray, you're watching firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know how you first smoke of the day. Hit us up on Instagram, first smoke of the day. People just met think me like on one brings bonus. the other, right? Like one happy customer brings another happy customer because that's our nature is to share and be like, wow, I went to this fucking amazing supper club yeah. and you won't believe yeah. what I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's that experience yeah. you're providing. And the fact that it doesn't exist it makes it easier, right? Like if I had other competition, it'd be all oh, potentially people go there. They're coming. Yeah. But yeah. just to have this kind of run by yourself, it's fucking dope. Well, it doesn't surprise me that you just told me that because you, you literally went to the Mecca NorCal yeah. where this shit like yeah. really start like for the US at least. Yeah. Like and you know, those people up there are like deeply rooted yeah. into this yeah. right here. Yeah. So you, I'm sure you learned a ton. That's like yeah. the whole time. That's what it's all about up yeah. there. Like if you're not doing that, like what you're, are you doing? you're fish out of water. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Just you're doing some kind of trade that's for that. Yeah, you own you the know? grow store. Or you yeah, the grow electrical, electrical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. something yeah. like that. I mean, you're either growing up there, look at that lighter, or you're you're doing something in lumber, like you know, with the big ass trees. No, nah, absolutely. What uh, what made what put you? To be keen to know to I'm out, hey, I'm gonna go up there and try that. Just somebody had an opportunity and mm. said, come out here and grow or nah, hell no. I went did up, it all on your I own. I did it all on my own. I rented a house okay. for six months and I did the whole thing. I, um upstairs was my grow. I had like a two story ranch and I, I lived downstairs and um I imported people to help me from New York, like and they would stay like two, three weeks and then go back home and somebody else would come. And um it, it was uh it was a good time to clear my brain from coming off of center package and having to shut center package down. My brain was like discombobulated and it was a good place to get focused again. But damn, I don't want to live there. <laughs> so did, were you growing outside too at this time? Nah, I was just going inside. I just did okay. it all inside. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. What were you? Do you remember what you were growing? I grew only sour because I I only had to bring it. I had to bring it back here, and at that time, this is really all, all they really sour. cared about. And I just grew all sour. Fuck it. Yeah, fire. So I feel like you got out there and like just sourced the cut and yeah. I, I had met somebody, so I told you I went to prison. So yeah. I met somebody. So you do some good guys. <laughs> yeah, and so I went up there and got the house and um, yeah, just. I, I brought my friend in who was an electrician who got me the power, the power story. So then he told me, don't do a certain amount of lights. You know what I mean? But pushing it, I'm pushing, I'm pushing it. I pushed it too much, right? And one night the fucking power on the mountain when I, all part of the mountain, the transformer blew, right? But my plants were sleeping. So it was fucking, it was dope. But I was panicking that they weren't going to get it. Everybody's a grower, so everybody in the house was probably panicking. And the power company got there quick, got it up, and um, 
it, it, we got, had the power up before my plants had to wake up. So that, that was great. But, um, and I was only about a month away from, so this could have really fucked me. You know what I mean? It, I was a month away from uh, my crop and the power's fucking down on the, on the thing. Anyway, went back up. I was like, thank God. And everything was back to normal. A month later, we're, the day that the crop is ready, I wake up that morning and I'm looking at the plants. I'm like, I tell these two girls that are there helping me. I'm like, wake up. It's happening. Today's the day. Like we, we've been waiting for this day, you know? And uh, I had to go into town and get some thing, trimmer things from the store. When we come back, there's a fucking guy with a pickup truck, PG&E, in my fucking front, in front of my house with a big ass camera. With, and he's taking pictures. I'm like, God damn, what the fuck is going on? I said, can I help you? He said, do you live here? I said, no, nah, I don't live here. My friend lives here. He said, well... I actually I hear him talking on his phone before we have this conversation. He says that he's at an illegal grow and he's given my address. Anyway, they traced the transformer thing back to my back to my place. And um anyway, the guy, now it's another roller coaster, right? My shit is done. It's inside and I got this fucking guy in my front lawn. The girls are panicking, you know? And um he says, Look, you know, you can't steal the power. Like, I get it. My whole family are growers. I'm from up here. This is with the guy from PG&E. He's like, my whole family grows. But I work for PG&E. You can't steal the power and you can't blow. We got to get paid for the transformer and blah, blah, blah. So he says, like, it's like a $10,000 bill. And, and who, I had the name of the electric under some girl's name. And she's like, whatever her name is to say, Betty's going to have to pay $10,000. And I'm like, well, Betty wants to pay the $10,000, but Betty's money is in the plants inside. You know, today's the day. This fucking guy said, look, I'm going to go to lunch right now. Come back in 45 minutes. What you do with those plants is on you. I had to run quick to town, rent a fucking U-Haul truck, get the fucking plants, get them, bring them to the fucking guy that I had the dinner at his house so that I could cut them and then package them and then bring them back here. <laughs> Fucking and I was like, you know what? Did he give I'm, you longer than 45 minutes? Nah, I, I'm, I don't, I don't really know. Like you I, didn't I see really him come know. back or nothing. I there was a blur. He was gone by point. the time he came back. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, that's the way that was like, you know what? I could probably find an easier way to make bread. <laughs> yeah. What a ride, huh? Not just one story. Yeah. Holly. Yeah. <laughs> How Did about you? I had no idea that I'm living in Murder Mountain. You know, they have these... Tweakerville. I had no idea, like, they were killing people on the regular, like, you know, growers. Like, There's I just, all people involved. The girls would come and they would be scared and they would be like, I'm like, nah, it's nothing to worry about. Like, you're not worried about living on this mountain? There's no lights at nighttime? It's like, there's only one other house past us. And I wasn't worried, but I really... But then I watched the fucking Murder Mountain show. I was like, Oh shit, the girls were right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of mysterious things going on up there. Yeah, sure. you hear yeah. some plants named after people, you know? Jeez. <laughs> some strains. <laughs> oh, Bill, did you ever run into Bill up the hill? No, who's no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were right. there just kind of hunkered down, huh? And we're yeah, just going man, back and forth. People were telling me, don't talk to people, like, yeah. don't go out to eat. They're gonna hear your fucking voice, they're gonna know you for a Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna don't go get on Tinder, don't meet girls over here, their cousins are you know, what I mean like you're gonna set yourself up. So I really didn't um I didn't bother with too many people. Yeah. What a fucking ride. Yeah. I think a lot of people, you know. In that time and era, or whatever, like you know, move out to Cali at least, yeah. or you know, Colorado, yeah, and try you know, something, yeah, ha have a stab at it. At least mm -hmm. someone in the family, yeah, at this during these times, you know, just because the progression of it, and now it's just coming to every state. Yeah, how do you feel about that? You know, it's it's here in New York, heavy. I mean, it's I think, fucking, it's everywhere. We're thankful for New York. The last few years, the four twenties have been yeah. fucking amazing. It brings people from literally everywhere right here, and what yeah. you know what better, better place to enjoy it that can hold so many people yeah you know it's yeah. exciting and it's um a lot of people are not gonna make it a lot of people haven't have already not made it i've seen people open and close already it's um it's it's happened if, if they watch what's happened in the other things they would see um 
I wouldn't have gotten into this just to sell wheat, you know, because I, I know we would have been at this point eventually, $30 eights, people like weed every corner or whatever. So I used pizza as my niche to become the biggest weed dealer in New York. You know what I mean? I think it's a, it's a concept and that you're giving it now a physical experience yeah. with other people when the U S like if you go to Amsterdam, first it's thing you're thinking, right? Yeah. The first thing you're thinking is, well, not with the pizza necessarily, you, mm -hmm. you stay yeah, true to like what, who you are and yeah. where you are and that shows, that's right. And that's, that's, how that's it where it widespreads yeah. in from there. Yeah. I feel like you start where you, you know, where you are and what you know, and it just goes from there. People adopt it. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Amsterdam right away, you're like, well, fuck, this is what the U S is missing. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to smoke and hang out yep. and socialize and yeah. get to know, oh, who are you? Where are you? Oh, you're from New York. Oh, and then see, oh man, I met this guy. Our lot, like we got a lot in common. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to stay in touch. You know, one of the dopest things that I, um, in doing this and having the restaurants was last month. No, not last mother's day. The mother's day before that we had three generations like at the table, there was the grandmother, the mother, the mother and then the do the daughter and they were all having and I'm like I told my employee my manager at the time I'm like where else would you see this at you can't see this nowhere like where could you go with your mom and your grandmom and they're all smokers and having like that's fucking beautiful like that's touching it, it like, really like, is yeah and they go back happy friendly dope. calm yeah good it's, combos it's all good it's stuff all good nothing that's been bad you know and it's the same thing for for men as well i could see that happen I, that's that's special man yeah that's something that's really what you're what you do it for mm -hmm. to see stuff like that yeah. and to be like oh, I'm, I'm happy to have people like this come enjoy hell yeah this thought that i once had that's well, now I, happening all over well when i see older people come like if i see an older couple or people like in their 60s or 70s, I go up to the table, like, how'd you hear about us? Like, how'd you get here? You know, sometimes they tell me my kids told me about it. And they told me to come, you know, I'm like, that's fucking so dope. Smart. Yeah. And he's curating different experiences. Yeah. Not like, well, here's our place. Enjoy it or don't. Well, a lot of people yeah. have come to all of our places. You know, I'm curious now. They just yeah. come to the next yeah. one and yeah. I open up something else and they'll come and experience that place too. Um, cause look at it. I mean, two years ago, I did a sick place in Brooklyn, Coney Island. Um, I did, it held 6,000 people. We did locks concerts. We did med shit there, but, um, we had, uh, it was a restaurant. It was an outdoor 200 person seated restaurant that we did this food with. And we had an outdoor movie theater that sat a hundred people that we would, um, show movies and people would smoke Godfathers after the movies. And it was surrounded by the, uh, it was literally in Coney Island. So the rides were all around us. And uh, wow. it was like the dope, it was the most thing I'm most proud of. And they let it rock. They let it rock from April 1st to uh, October 31st. I'm talking about, we have thousands of wow. people in there. You know what I mean? That's a long, that's a long time. Yeah. And they just let it rock. Like I had a permit or something. You're I just you're did pioneering. it. I just did it and and it worked. Yeah. You're pioneering. I, when I got it's into crazy. it, I never thought I'd make it to, to October. I thought we'd get a couple of months out of this, make some money, they'd shut us down and we get some good press out of it, and that's how it would end. I, I was amazed that we made it to October thirty first. This is that's what we're missing. Halloween. Movies crazy. outside, smoking, yeah. socializing, yeah. indoor experience. Yeah. He keeps creating these different experiences. How, how do you come up with like the next concept? I just smoke really. My next thing I really like to do is um, I'd like to open up a hotel or like a resort type of thing, like um, where you stay and there's a restaurant and lounge, like all of it in one place, you know? Hospitality is the game. Yeah, man. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. it's so dope to see all these. If I just sold, if I just sold it right now, I'd be scared. I'd yeah, be, I'd be scared right now if I just sold weed. Like, I would think the end was somewhere close. Talk about it. Yeah, I'm just, there's just, look, before I opened up restaurants, we were huge in delivery, like pickup and delivery. 
that shit almost dwindled, you know, like if we were just doing that, we would be out of business. Um, nobody wants to wait an hour for their weed anymore for your, for the delivery service to come. They go to every corner and every corner sells like $30 eights. And, um, we, we, that's another thing is like, not everybody wants the best weed. Like I, I do, but the majority of people in New York probably don't. Yo, so if you guys didn't know already, everybody's switching to Triff. Terps are a really big deal in today's market, but most importantly, so is the flavor. So everybody's switching to Drip and feeding their flavor. And if you want to switch to Drip, reach out to us. Family at firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know. I want to switch to Drip Hydro. We're dripped out. We're right here, our favorite place to go, you know, where the pros go to grow, at Grow Generation. Over 60 stores nationwide, either in-store or online. Use our code. First Smoke 10. Family, get online if you're shopping for grow goods, First Smoke 10, or in-store anywhere in the U.S. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you. We'll see you there. Yo, we got a gift from Dr. Dabba, excess. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give. Dr. Diver, come on, man. The home of big things right here. We went to the takeout NYC, one of those little, like, it looks like the little red bands. Yeah, you just go yeah, to the window. Yeah, yeah and got yeah. a got a eighth of Basio gelato for thirty dollars, mm -hmm. and it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see Those how quickly cities like this yeah. progress because that definitely wasn't the case for LA. Yeah, no, no way. Yeah, them you trucks know? Are everywhere too. The what? Them trucks. Oh yeah, no, I everywhere. see them everywhere. The thing it's about, already printed in my brain. The thing about those trucks and um, is they're not safe. So I've hired in my, doing these restaurants, we've hired people who have worked for all of those trucks like throughout time. They've all been stuck up multiple times. Like, you know, it's mm. real, the, the truck thing is really not a safe um, thing for anybody. They put a kid on there. You, you have a kid with inventory, with cash. Yeah. Like you're setting that kid up in New it York was City a girl. too. Yeah. yeah. All that, the young a lot girl. of them that I, I didn't even think I about that. Coming girls. from Florida, you don't no. think about that the as much. The wolves are out there. You just yeah. put yeah, a yeah, sign yeah. up here. Come. Yeah. They'll I didn't take even it just for the inventory. Aspect. Yeah, 100%. It's a lot of, lot of money. <laughs> well, like, Another thing crazy. that's bad for the, in the industry is they're killing these people in the smoke shops. They keep robbing the smoke shops. And like robbing would be one thing, but you're killing these fucking kids in the smoke shops for what? Yeah, executing them. Yeah, For no money? For nothing? Yeah, a yeah. little bit of nothing. One guy got like five hundred bucks for life. Five hundred dollars got life in prison. It's fucking sick. Yeah, it's like so. So security is something too that um. Anyway, should concern us all, and just opening up a store is not the safest <laughs> way to do this business. Yeah. Knowing how to reinvent yourself, I, I like it. Almost seems like you're able to take a step back a lot of times and be like, "All right." The industry's going this way. Mm -hmm. Where do I go from here? Like, where does yeah. that come from? Just watching and being like, I live this. I live this and smoke this every day. And I hope that I'm making the right decision, you know, but I never know. Like, take Coney Island. Cost a fortune for me to open Coney Island. I took a empty parking lot, a full block of New York City and made it into a cannabis amusement thing. Like, that was a risk. I had no idea if it would last. I had no idea, you know. Um, but I knew that this was my opportunity to do it and do it first, like, you know, to see, test them. Okay. It worked. I'm not the enemy, you know, these cannabis people, I hope they give me some kind of, like, we pay a lot of taxes. You know, we run this like a pizza, like a restaurant, like, like a very well restaurant. And, uh, but we pay a lot of money in taxes, uh, payroll taxes. We have over 60 people on, on salary. That's something to be proud of, man. Yeah. What was it like leading up to this? You know, what were you doing? And like, I, was that the grow? And then you came back and did this? Cracked yeah. off right away? Or how long was well, that? Well, in between there, I did these high-end dinners. And it, that was probably like a year that I did these high-end dinners. And I did them one weekend a month. 
So I would go like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday once mm-hmm. a month. And um, we would do, I would hire a chef and they would do like steak, lobster, like dope dishes just infused. And uh, I would rent like um, Airbnb townhouses. Or one time I did it on a yacht and um, just different experiences. And people would follow me. And then other people started doing the dinners. And um, I saw that and I'm like, uh, I have to find something. Yeah. And pizza's not easy to copy. You know what I mean? No. Like pizza is, um, well, if it was, every pizzeria would just taste the same and it would mm-hmm. just be all good pizza, but it's not. <laughs> and um, I thought that a light bulb went off and I was like, that's it. It's, I'm going to hide behind pizza. Yeah. And so in the beginning, I just sold pizza. I didn't even sell weed. Like maybe for the first two years, I just collected data of people buying my pizza and I knew they were weed smokers. And then like after doing that for two years, I just sent out a text message like, hey, boom. And that made my, the business double right there. And then the COVID made it like quadruple. Wow. You know, we were having sick days, sick days, 30 drivers, sick mm-hmm. days, sick. <laughs> 30 drivers. Yeah, sick. Were you a fan of like the deliveries back in the day before all this? It was like Cartoon Network. There was a couple different ones, right? I was a fan. I mean, I was a customer. Yeah. You know what I mean? I used to, that's how I used to get my weed. Are you a piff or sour guy? No, I'd rather sour. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 50. <laughs> yeah, man. This is, this, this, it's an exciting time, right? Mm-hmm. To be in this, like, I feel, I feel lucky. I feel lucky to have picked this at the right time. Like, timing is everything in life. And, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be by myself in this industry, like in this um, pizza thing, but um, it's been a fucking dope ride, even if it stopped now. It's fucking dope. I think that's what it's all about. That's yeah. like the, what the payoff is. And obviously you seem to be making good moves. If you are taking everything, you say all these locations and you keep reinvesting into yourself and yeah. your concepts. And if, as long as you keep providing dope experiences, I don't see it going anywhere. Yeah. That's what's they literally better give all me about. my license. They better give that shit to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest pinch, like pinch you moment where you're just like, wow, look at this. Look what happened with this or look how this was created. Mm, I think it was during COVID, yeah. man. COVID was, I, 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 it feels funny to talk about it. You know, you know, so many people, COVID was a bad, a bad thing, but I didn't get COVID. I, I don't know anybody that got COVID. I, uh, and it was, it was a good thing to me. Like I used to stay home a lot before COVID. I used to stay home a lot. Yeah. You know, I, I, my life didn't really change at all <laughs> through COVID. I did the same thing. I went to bed at the same times and um, I lived the same way. That's just how it worked out. How this, this Godfather, let's talk about this for a second. This is impressive. Mm-hmm. They came about when I opened the restaurants and I wanted to give um, customers something different to buy and uh, enjoy their experience at and to smoke one of them through dinner most people buy one you know most people come to the thing and they buy one yeah i mean it's another add to the experience you're yeah where else you're gonna get something like right seven grams it's crazy yeah tastes good too tastes you got rolling these i got this cuban guy yeah i can his name is jorge i can uh, tell He's really good. There's no joke. No, these are Sounds like a real cigar. Pull, yeah. And when you pull through what, it. So, so what are you putting in these? Uh, to be honest, bro, I don't even see the, I don't even see the wheat, you know, like it goes through other people. Batched. Yeah. yeah. Even people are like, yo, what is it that you're smoking? I'm like, honestly, I'm smoking whatever they put in my, in my tube. I, I don't know whatever's in these tubes. I don't know if they. It's candy. I can taste it's it. It's good. I'm telling you, it's, it's good. It's candy. Yeah. 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 Man, that's, that's awesome. awesome. But yeah, I have a big I, uh, You want to light one up, Biggs? Yeah, let's do it. Get it to, can we borrow that? I get it too. Yeah, yeah. Light this bad boy up, man. It's only right we get this Godfather lit right here at the stoned. Seven it's like grand. A two hour good time right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pass this around to the team. Shout out to everybody helping I got, us I out. I'll give you two. You got City. one for you guys and you pass it in work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the pizza pusher. That's another thing that separates, you know, you need something that separates you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the day of just, game, man. Like the all day the just filling an eighth and... bag of fucking weed and being like, hey, this is cookies and this shit is over, man. You can't do that. Like it, 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 the, the, the pizza and this, I would say, and I do the sodas, 
you know um, medicated sodas yeah like in the bottles yeah you know? and um so everybody gets that anyway those are things that make you stand out a little bit um from everybody else do we sell regular eights we do like we do is of course we have to sell it but it's not like our push mm -hmm. that's our push i can't wait to see what he medicates next like i i go into all these questions like has there been anything you've r and d tried to medicate and it just didn't work out mm -hmm. like this is a good idea but it just no no, we, we haven't, I'm not a big, you know, I watched that McDonald's documentary, Super Size Me, yeah. and I'm, so I'm a big fan of a small menu, and um, I, I don't think that um, business-wise, just having a bunch of things on your menu makes you better or bigger or just gives you more stuff to make sure it doesn't go bad or, you know, um, we give people five, it, it's an unlimited five course meal. So while you're here, you have two and a half hours to eat as much of these five courses as you want. Wow. Um, you're either going to be really full or you're going to be really high. So, um, you know, we try to tell everybody to pace yourself. That's dope. Yeah, the pizza pusher. Yo, First Smoke family, if you want to know where to get all the most exclusive stuff done for your brand at, it's moodtrays.com. Use the code FSOTD, and they're going to take care of you. Fast turnarounds, low minimums, and they know what they're doing. High quality products where we get all our stuff done for the podcast at. Grinders, trays, rolling cradles, all types of the new things that are dropping. Go check them out. Tell them the family sent you. They're going to take care of you. Appreciate it. It's fucking pretty dope that that this is how the world even knows me. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking sick pizza. What, uh, any collabs or anything you got coming up? Nah, man, we just, we opened in Philadelphia on Thursday. Talk about that. We're, um, in South Philly. Um, shout out to Philly, man. Yeah, too. man. I mean, you know, you know as I check my data and we look at our data, um, somehow the major, besides the people that live in New York, the majority of our customers come from the state of Pennsylvania and specifically Philadelphia, but all over, but specifically the majority come from Philadelphia and that's how we got there. I'm hoping that Philadelphia it's a smart way to move. takes a, the approach that New York takes and leaves me alone. You know, they have mm -hmm. their own headaches, they have their own problems, things going on over there the same way we do. And um, I hope pizza, cannabis pizza is not a priority to them. That's it's, awesome. It's interesting too, though. That's a part of your the pioneering you're doing is that every situation's different. Yeah, because different people involved. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people for some reason don't fuck with cannabis at all, like zero, mm -hmm. like none. You know, you know, we get people who don't smoke and come just they'll, they'll try this. They'll try it in food, but they're like, oh, "I don't smoke." You think I'm gonna be okay? I'm like, "That you're gonna be okay. You're gonna have the best time tonight because you don't smoke." Like you're going to feel it better than everybody does. <laughs> That's a great way to put yeah, it. Yeah, but, but, but I, I didn't know that either. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't know that people would come to try it in food who didn't smoke, you know, who does, don't smoke. How do people, if they want to they want to come here when they come through New York, how do they find the different spots? Is there one thing like a way you go pizza or? Uh, yeah, the pizza the pizza pusher dot com. The pizza pusher dot com. Mm, that's our website and you could um order pick up and delivery from the different locations or make reservations to come and eat inside. Because I mean coming to New York, this is an experience, like for the family even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if like my parents, like one of them smoked or one of them yeah. was cool with it, I'd still be like, You gotta come here. We let's experience this as a, a group. Just to, right. to so know this is happening. What we would do is we would make your moms not medicated if your mom didn't smoke. So your mom could sit here and still eat the same food as you, you guys are eating. That's good to know. It's just because th that happens often. Like not yeah. A lot of times you smoke and the girl you're with doesn't smoke or your wife doesn't smoke or and so it happens a lot actually. That's good to know, though. Yeah. yeah. Smart or, way to do it, or too. Even sometimes people are like, yo, you know what? I'm too high already. And like they're halfway through and they're like, can you make the dessert just gelato and cannoli? And we'll, we'll serve them just regular gelato and cannoli. Non medicated. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what it's really all about. It's true, like mm -hmm. hospitality. Yeah. When you take care of the your people in the community, they're going to tell everybody. Everybody's tolerance level is different, you know? No, and it's good to know as a consumer. Like, no, nah, I'm good right here. Yeah. You ever no go reason to, to push it. You ever go to them um, Brazilian steakhouses? They have the red and the green. It's like something like that. Like, you know, like red. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm redlining. Yeah. Every time I go there, I leave there crazy stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. It's a different experience. Just like this Godfather. Oh, bro. Let's see what you got, Biggs. That's the Tony Soprano right here. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. It's only right. What do you think's next? You got your eyes on location or event or, you know, I got anything. my eyes on a location upstate. It's uh it's three properties in one and um kind of what I was talking about before like a resort but not really a resort. Um the property is 12 I'd have to build 12 Airbnbs, cannabis Airbnbs upstairs. Downstairs is a three four a three floor um restaurant and to the side of it attached by a backyard is an event space and it's all one property and it's upstate new york like an hour and a half from here um and that's gonna that, that'll probably be the next thing that i that i that i do how about like coney island can we expect to see that again so coney island the reason i didn't do it again uh, is uh, i bit off more than i could chew at first and i just had to run with it so this was a Property didn't have running water. Mm. So to run a restaurant with no running water, I had to take the have people take the dishes to the Manhattan to my restaurant here to wash them every day, go back and forth. You know, there was no water. Imagine a bath you know, we, we didn't have no bathroom, we couldn't put bathrooms, so we had to pay rent like a trailer, like a movie trailer, like they would have on set. Shit cost me 10000 a month for them to come and like clean it every day and like suck all the stuff out and whatever. It was like 10000 a month. So I'm seven months. The bathrooms cost me seventy grand. Anyway, for those two reasons, the, 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 the no bathrooms and the no water shit, I was like, I'm not doing this again. But look, look at how much money that's he's spiking the economy, the local economy. That yeah. many people showing a lot up. of opportunity too. Jobs now they're running movie trailers for bathrooms. They're cleaning the ten thousand dollars a month entertainment, travel, gas. I mean, it's like levels and levels and levels of this, and it's like uh, it's good for, for them the community. To, yeah, exactly. It's good for everybody. You think that uh, you'll maybe try to get a new location or like you know re envision the concept? Mm, I, I'd really like to do some kind of hotel, some kind of something with a pool, some kind of something more long term, some so it's kind of resort, like you less know, of like, a gig and more of a you know ongoing thing that yeah. you can continue to improve. Yeah, it, it again, timing is everything. I, if you do it too quick, it's like you, you know, it's, too a, early. It's, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of risk, and it's a lot of risk to put it. You don't know what town is going to be cool with it, not cool with it. No, you're right. Well, shit, man. What What's the Instagram? You got any shout outs? Any, Instagram anywhere? is Pizza Pusher and our website is thepizzapusher.com. And that ends with an A, Pizza Pusher. P-U-S-H-A. Yeah. Well, thank you for having us, man. I think we worked up an appetite. Oh, bro. I cannot wait. You thank know? you for coming. If I'm coming to New York City, I'm stopping here from every, every time. This has got to be the first stop. Yeah. Come, Come to on. the Pizza Pusher Stone Lounge <laughs> and get some gourmet cannabis pizza or some nice drinks or you can get non-medicated if you're coming with someone that does want to get Word. medicated and smoke some amazing weed this is this is a spot in new york city it's amazing experience right when i stepped in the whole energy changed and the experience began you know and i've kind of forgot about the outside world since we've been inside here so yeah. that's that's when i know like all oh, this shit is good you know but so. i'd love to have you guys at nighttime oh, absolutely the show or music absolutely and just so people know there's cannabis legends that come here yeah like i, yeah. I see the pictures and stuff. Them. like you might yeah. be sitting next to some pass a joint to somebody yeah, pass a jar to somebody that is literally a legend in the cannabis space or the rap space or the creative space absolutely really cool. yeah yo thanks again guys absolutely pizza pusher we appreciate it live from new york city we're at the stone lounge appreciate Let's everybody go. we're out peace peace